Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, I will be going to discuss an important topic in Salesforce integration and the topic is Salesforce Google SSO, that how to integrate Salesforce or how to log in into Salesforce using Google SSO. Where uh, we'll be exploring how to set up and configure single sign-on between Salesforce and Google and by the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of how to enable SSO, how to uh, how it can be benefit your organization. So whether you are a Salesforce admin or a Google admin, this tutorial is for you. So let's get started. And before I start, before I begin my demonstration, uh, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and uh, to get more updates on the uh, more updates on different topics. You can press the bell icon to get the update about the, the uh, new videos. So the very first question comes in the mind is that why should we go for SSO? Uh, like Google SSO, you might have, because if you are a technical guy, you know about SSO, it stands for single sign on. So basically what SSO is, what's the use of SSO? Because as you know that this is one of the most tedious job as a Salesforce admin is resetting the user's password. Even though we got a button to reset the password, but still, sometimes what many times what happened, being an administrator, we need to reset user's account. And so single sign-on or SSO, it allows user to access multiple applications with one set of credentials. You might have experienced that, that using your Google account, you can sign in or you can register on many applications. Even if you have to register on any website or if you have to sign up, you you don't have to provide your credentials. You only you have to share. You you only have to sign up or log in as Google, and the the website will automatically take your Google details with the permissions and register an account for you. And then from next time onwards, without providing any credentials, you can directly log in by clicking on the uh, Google button by clicking on the sign up sign in by using Google. So like this way, we don't have to remember the password for different applications for each application separately. Okay, so that is called SSO single sign-on. Now, in order to configure single sign-on for Google, we require two things. First of all, we require a Salesforce, either developer or a sandbox environment, which I have already got with me. And the second is the Google admin account. For Google admin, we need we require a Google workspace. So that's important. Without that, it is not possible to configure this functionality. So as you can see, I've already signed up a Google account for me, admin.google.com. And uh, you have to configure, you have to register yourself on Google workspace. I've already done that. And here, uh, the steps are, the first thing we need to do is, as soon as you log in, as soon as you sign in into your Google workspace, you will be redirected to the home page and there you will find out a functionality called web and mobile app. So what you have to do, you have to click on web and mobile app. So you have to click on web and mobile app. Now in web and mobile app, we need to configure one app. So I've, as you can see, I've logged in into the Google Workspace account as an admin. And uh, here from the application web and mobile app, And then I click on add an application. So I'm going to add an application. We are going to search an application. So I just search an application and the application which I'm going to look here is that application is called Salesforce. So I just type in here Salesforce. So you have to do step-by-step step in order to complete this activity. So I just type in Salesforce in the search box. And as you can see, we'll be getting Salesforce Android, Salesforce Web SAML, Salesforce Sandbox. So we have to go for SAML. Now, what is SAML? Now, SAML basically stands for Security Assertion Markup Language. This is the XML-based open standard for transferring identity between two parties. So an identity provider and a service provider. Get it? So here I'm going to select Salesforce SAML because I'm, I'm using Salesforce production environment. 
So depends on uh, depends on your platform whether you will be using production one or the sandbox one. You have to select. So I click on. I just I'm using production one. So I click on select. And once you click on select, here you, here you will get an option, download IP metadata, this option. So once you click on select, you will get down, download IDP metadata. So what you have to do, uh, you have to download this metadata. So click download metadata. And this will download a file for you. So I have down, uh, I, I, I download this file on my desktop, means on my system. So Google IDP metadata. IDP basically identity provider. So Salesforce is a, uh, uh, this. Uh, Salesforce will be the identity provider for that. And you can see I download IDP metadata for Salesforce here. Then click on continue. Here we have to specify the service provider detail that who will be the service provider. So my service provider is Salesforce. And here I have to provide the my Salesforce domain. So my Salesforce domain is this is my this is a Salesforce instance I'm using. And my domain is this. So https developer.nightingforce.com or else we can just I we can just go to my domain. Okay. In order to get the domain, we can just get the domain. my domain and this is my domain you can see current domain url this is my domain name so i copy this domain name and i have to suffix ht actually it, if you just look at this it is https it's exactly same developer instead of lighting.force.com it should be my.salesforce.com so what i can do i copy this url i copy this url and uh, it should be my.salesforce.com. So I can copy this. Yes. And as you can see, HTTPS, we have to specify the domain specific. This is my domain. Okay. So it should be develop.my.salesforce.com. So it should be my.salesforce.com. So I, this is my domain. So I copy this domain name and paste it here. So this is my domain name. And what I do now, I copy this domain name and add it in all the URLs. I set the URL for all of them. So dev ed dot my dot salesforce dot com. So I just change the URL to my domain URL based on our Salesforce org. Then we scroll down the uh, we scroll down the page and this page we have the U, uh, we have the name ID format unspecified and the basic information. So I leave it as it is and click on continue. And then uh, optionally, we can map the attributes. So Google it, Google uh, directory to the attributes in uh, Salesforce, or if you want to send a user group membership information in SAML. But I just want to keep it simple. So therefore, I'm not going to make any changes. I'm, I'm not going to make any changes here and click on finish. And you can see the configuration has been done. Now, one more thing, we have to give permission. So I just expand this on user access. I expand this and I just say on for everyone. Save this. Select and click save. So what we have done, we have successfully configured Google as IDP provider, identity provider. Now we have to configure Salesforce as the service provider. Okay, because as I've told you, like in SAML, we have IDP and uh, IDP and service provider. So here, Google will consider to be as the IDP provider. Salesforce will uh, Salesforce will consider to be as a service provider. So now it's time to configure Salesforce as a service provider. And how do I do that? I I get back to Salesforce. I open my Salesforce platform, and here I click on single sign on, single sign on settings. And in single sign on settings, I click on edit and enable SAML. I check, check this, uh, I just uh, checked the checkbox. Click on save. Next, we have to configure the SAML single sign on settings. And this either we can configure it from the beginning or else we can 
upload upload the metadata file so if you remember we have downloaded the metadata file in the beginning from the google idb provider so i'm going to use the same metadata file here so i click on new from metadata file and upload a file so i click on choose metadata file and i'm going to upload my file from my downloads so i have already downloaded the metadata file and i open this file this is my google idp metadata.xml file and click on create now here uh, what changes we have to do so once we upload the file we can change the name and the api name for this one so i just change this name to let's say google sso and this api name so google sso and the rest of the uh, rest of the settings are remain same i'm not making any changes in the rest of the files rest of the settings only one setting i'm going to check that is the sml identity type i will be using the federation id so assertion contains the federation id from the user's object so this we're going to configure in the user object so i just check this option and then click on save now we have to enable the option to log in through sso in salesforce and for this i just check my domain so we have configured uh, we have configured the saml single sign on setting in salesforce in the service provider as a service provider now we have to give permission so i click on my domain and as you can see my domain here when i scroll down there is an option called authentication configuration i click on edit and i'm getting the google sso authentication service so now you can see we can use our uh, we can use the google authentication service here with okay so we'll just i just check this and click on save and now it's time to specify the federation id for the user for this uh, the federation id that that uh, that setting we have checked in the uh, while set while configuring the saml or uh, saml const setting so i'll just switch to the users i open my users setting users option and in users option the user which i'm going to use so this is my user account i click on edit and uh, here Scroll down federation ID. I just set the federation ID Sumit dot Goel at the rate AI Tech One dot com. And this is the basically this federation ID is similar to the Google admin account. So that's the same at Google workspace. So the same one. I just use the same and click on save. That's all we have to do. That's all. These all are the settings we need to configure. Now it's time. for the testing and in order to in order to test it what we need to do we need to log out from this and then log in again so i'll just click on profile and click on log out and when i click on log out you will find out an option log in with google sso for the same domain and now when we click on log in with google sso for the same domain then what happen it will uh redirect to the basically it will redirect to the google account and we have to provide the google account we have to provide the credential google credentials uh to log in and once the authorization is done it will allow to log in so now when i click on log in with google sso what happen it will okay when i click on log in with sso it will ask me to select to provide the google account and you can see that's my google account i will be using that's my google account so sumit at the sumit.goel@aitech1.com and when i click on this account it will allow me to sign in and it will redirect me to the salesforce account and you can see i successfully logged in into my salesforce by using that credential so once i provide once i click on the uh, once i click on login by using google sso and i provided my sale uh, i just provided my google credentials 
so the at google at the google credentials which we configured it it redirect me to uh, basically the sign is successful and it redirect me to the salesforce home page so that's the way we configure the uh, we configure the google sso in uh, for salesforce and we sign in into salesforce by using google sso so uh, that's the way we can configure the settings in salesforce like the, so at same like uh, the way we configure google sso in same manner we can configure other social networks sso also to log in into salesforce so that will be going to discuss in our coming videos if you like this video don't forget to press the like button you can post your comments in comment box you can reach out to us on the mail id or the the numbers given for the customized training on salesforce you can reach you can visit our website www.aitech1.com thanks for watching have a nice day goodbye